continuing in our sermon series of what Jesus did in those 40 days between the cross and the ascension. Today we're going to pick up a little bit of the story that we've already studied, um, where Jesus um, challenges Peter with, do you love me? And three times he uh, tells Peter to go into ministry. I'm going to begin then right after Jesus says to him the third time, feed my sheep, beginning at verse 18. Very truly, I tell you, when you were younger, you used to fasten your own belt and to go wherever you wished. But when you grow old, you will stretch out your hands, and someone else will fasten a belt around you and take you where you do not wish to go. He said this to indicate the kind of death by which he would glorify God. After this, he said to to Peter, follow me. Peter turned and saw the disciple whom Jesus loved following them. He was the one who had reclined next to Jesus at the supper and had said, Lord, who is it that is going to betray you? When Peter saw him, he said to Jesus, Lord, what about him? Jesus said to Peter, if it is my will that he remain until I come, what is that to you? Follow me. So the rumors spread in the community that this disciple would not die. Yet Jesus did not say to him that he would not die, but if that is my will that he remain until I come, what is that to you? This is the disciple who is testifying to these things and has written them, and we know that his testimony is true. But there are also many other things Jesus did. If every one of them were written down, I suppose that the world itself could not contain the books that would be written. This is God's word for God's people. I am the oldest of four children. My youngest sibling is a brother. He is seven years younger than I am. And having younger siblings is both a curse and a blessing. And any of you who are oldest children, you know exactly what I'm talking about. While growing up, Brandy would kind of want to tag along. And there were times we had great conversations and great fun because younger siblings do have a tendency to kind of look up to the older ones. And then there were times that he was just annoying. I think he really worked at being annoying. When you're number four, you have to work a little bit harder to get that attention, don't you? He was the most annoying when I would get into trouble for something and my parents would be having the talk with me about something I said or did. And there was Randy watching the whole thing, grinning from ear to ear. (laughs) It was kind of like that for Peter and John too. Peter was like the oldest sibling. John probably loved hanging around Peter something Peter wasn't always keen on, but John tagged along. John was the one that beat him to certain places at times, sometimes Peter thought just to be annoying. But in our passage from John's gospel, Jesus has just commissioned Peter three times in response to Peter's imperfect love for Jesus. And Jesus assures Peter that even though his love is imperfect, it does not disqualify him as a leader of the other disciples. In fact, Peter would be such a faithful follower that in the end he would be crucified as a martyr to the glory of God. How'd you like to get that little prophecy laid on you? Jesus then firmly reminds Peter how this will happen. He says, you follow me. In our English it just says follow me, but the Greek implies you follow me. It is a very intimate and serious conversation. And I don't think Peter really wants to hear it. He tries to avoid the hard words of Jesus and he turns away to do that and guess who's listening to the whole thing? Yep, John, grinning from ear to ear. Can't you see it? So let's open up this story and hear how this story might apply to us today. Would you pray with me? Gracious God, You have created each one of us, each in our own way. Open 
up this story so that we may hear the common theme and also the unique call that we may bring you glory and honor by not just what we say and do, but by the living out of our lives with you. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, Lord, for you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Jesus tells Peter that at the end of his life, he will have been that faithful disciple that Peter had always wanted to become, but it just couldn't seem to grasp it right now. That was the good news, but there was more. Jesus then tells Peter he will die a very painful death. He would, in fact, be crucified, and that was probably a little scary for Peter. Following Jesus means that we're going to go against the world. We're going against the flow of the world, and it is not easy to follow Jesus. Peter really doesn't want to hear all that. Jesus looks at Peter and invites him to keep walking in faith, to keep following him. Peter turns to see that John is following them both, He's eavesdropping, just like little brothers often do. But John is telling this story in John's Gospel. Peter is not telling it. So John describes what's happening like a little brother would. He says in verse 20, Peter turned and saw the disciple whom Jesus loved following him. Peter might have written it this way. I turned and saw John following me. Jesus always did love him best. Well, it was true, Jesus did love John. John was the one who had the privilege of sitting next to Jesus before Jesus was crucified. John was the one who would lean over and whisper a question in Jesus' ear and Jesus would answer him just for John. So I think it was the combination of really not wanting to accept what Jesus was telling him and being slightly annoyed that John had, once again, crashed his personal time with Jesus, and Peter can't help but be struck by the fact that John had it easier than he did. How many of you are oldest children? Does that sound familiar to you? Yeah. Peter points out this fact to Jesus with the same kind of questions the sibling asks all the time. If you're a parent, you've heard it. Oh yeah? Well, what about him? Uh -huh. See, the rumor was among the early church that the Apostle John was going to live forever. And that certainly seemed like a better and even easier pathway of discipleship than being crucified as a martyr, doesn't it? The grass is always greener on the other side of the fence, right? It's always easier to look at someone else's life than it is to take a hard look at our own life. It's always easier to compare ourselves with others or to be convinced that we need to be like someone else or to be bitter about someone else who seems to always get away with stuff when we have to work so hard just to get by. Sometimes this kind of comparison can be healthy because it helps us identify what we need to do to refine or to tweak our life's journey so that we can get it back on track. Refining our journey is one thing. Defining ourselves by comparing ourselves to others is something entirely different altogether. Each one of us is uniquely created by God. We are designed for a purpose. And each one of us is uniquely called by God. We are defined by who we are in Jesus Christ. Our biology does not define us. Our friends do not define us. Our career does not define us. And how we compare to others does not define us. Jesus Christ defines us. He defines who we are in Christ. And the Colossage passion that passage that Pastor Steve read reminds us to stay rooted and built up in Christ. Don't be swayed by comparison to others. Don't be swayed by cool new ideas that try to divine us. 
be thoughtful, listen, and ponder them, but be aware of the ways that we can be deceived by greener grass. It is Jesus Christ who completes us, not anyone or anything else. Jesus tells Peter this without the fluff of Paul's words from Colossians. John's life would not turn out to be so easy, Peter. John is going to suffer. He would eventually be banned from the mainland to the island of Patmos, separated from his church family and his friends. And those who have had the good fortune to grow old can testify growing old is not for cowards. Can I get an amen? Body, bodies simply don't work. Our warranty gives up on parts. Oh, John was going to suffer, even as Peter would suffer. But their suffering would be so very different. Suffering does not define the quality of our discipleship. What defines the quality of our discipleship is that we glorify God, and that's what matters. That's what matters. Jesus tells Peter not to be concerned with John's faith journey. Peter is to worry about his own journey. Each of us, as baptized Christians, are to do the same. We are called to ministry in different ways for the glory of God. Paul was called to travel to the ends of the earth as a missionary. Peter was called to shepherd God's people. John was called to be a witness to what he heard and what he saw to testify to the truth of Jesus Christ. How fitting is that for a little brother who eavesdrops, huh? Each suffers in his own way for the glory of God. Paul was executed, but only after writing his letters to the churches to help them grow, and those letters are still alive for us today. Peter was crucified upside down. That was his request. They offered to crucify him like Jesus. He said, I'm not good enough and wanted to be crucified upside down. But he was a disciple who glorified God in life as well as death and is beloved to many of us yet today. And the disciple whom Jesus loved wrote the Gospel of John as a witness to the reality of the truth of Jesus Christ. If it is the will of God that your brother or sister in Christ has a different calling and a different blessing than you, rejoice. Rejoice. What is that to you, said Jesus? You follow Jesus. So don't worry about what the world says to you. If you're at one of those milestones, you're graduating high school, graduating college, taking a new job, if you're in one of those milestones, pay attention. Don't worry about what the world says. You follow Christ. Because our first calling as baptized Christians and disciples are to be disciples of Jesus Christ. And wherever we found ourselves, whether it's at the baptismal fount, whether it's in the pulpit, whether it's in school, whether it's graduating, whether it's growing old, the invitation is still the same to all of us. You follow me. And all God's people said,